serious. Very serious. Wow. And very ugly. And it, um, you know, it had to do with my breakup with Kalila. Oh, shit. But they did it. They broke you up. Mm-hmm. They were a big part of it. Wow. And um, so it was much like the Ari, you broke Ari up with the girl. Was it like that? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. If, if you know your podcast law, you know. You know I, I, it's New York shit. I, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not New that, York. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's a question. That's a Fonzie shit. Bobby? Yeah, yeah. Bobby? Yeah, yeah. It's not Don't a question. Don't do this, man. <laughs> Don't do this, man. You know what you did, dude. All right, let's go to the next question. Next question. This, so interesting, isn't it, right? Now, I'm going to say my unpopular opinion is that I feel like he's joking about Brian Callen and Brendan Shaw leading to the breakup of him and Kalila. I feel like the breakup was already on the cards anyway, especially if you're having, I think if you're in a relationship, again, take away what you think about Kalila. Let's just imagine the part of the problem was that Bobby Lee wasn't being as intimate with her sexually as she wanted. Or they didn't have that kind of relationship because Bobby Lee was going through what he was going through. Maybe sobriety issues, maybe self-confidence, whatever the issues were, but they weren't, you know, he, she wasn't fulfilling her needs in that department. I feel like if that's the case and you have such a contrast in terms of expectation levels, it's always going to end one way or the other. Do you know what I mean? It's the same way how, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's, it's just one of those things I don't feel like you can kind of reconcile. Um, it's going to have to be a split. If anything, the Brendan and Brian thing maybe sped up the breakup, but I don't think it was a sole reason for it, in my opinion. It may be, and again, I think sometimes in life, things can happen that are shitty that are for the good. So it's a shitty thing that happened. But it obviously led to the good thing because now they're both kind of living their kind of, you know, the life that they want to live. Kaya can go to Hawaii as much as she wants and slam as many serpents as she wants. And Bobby Lee is free to kind of diddle loads of flipping, you know, cutesy looking white girls, right? Because he seems to have a thing for like white women. So clearly <laughs> they've all kind of, you know, they, they, they both ended up in a place where they kind of want to be in a weird way. But it is good still that Bobby Lee is saying this though with his chest. Like, no, they caused it. I like that he's doing that. Like, he's not forgiving them. He's not trying to be like, everything's okay. No, I don't talk to them anymore. They're not my friends. They caused this issue. They led to the breakup of me and my relationship. And it's never going to be the same again. I love that he's saying that. That is great to hear. So, big up Bobby Lee. Uh, big up um, uh, Bob Lee or Robert Lee for the podcast overall. I think um, that's great. And I do appreciate them all in all. So what are people saying here in the chat? What are you guys saying? Sorry, I haven't, I haven't checked in here. I've been flipping ranting for an hour and 25 minutes without even looking at the chat once. This is what happens when you watch BGL. See, I've been contaminated with BGL. Whatever BGL was on when he was on those podcasts, I think I've absorbed it and I've now become a chatty patty. I'm just sitting here chatting away, not looking at the chat in the slightest. Uh, what are people saying here? Uh, Robert Kelly, sorry, Bobby Kelly. Um, uh, why isn't the chat not loading? Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate when it does this. Hopefully it loads. But you're saying here... Um, uh what people are saying here in the chat az i love your outlook on social media these guys shouldn't do this job if you can't handle criticism and you social media to gauge your audience or lean into the hate exactly mads and honestly for real like this whole hate thing as well i think it's so overblown in my opinion it really is overblown even brendan Schwab and brian can's a good example fair enough there's 100 homeless cats on the subreddit it doesn't mean there's 100 haters if anything, there's probably people on there that had dormant accounts from when they first subscribed to the Fire and the Kids subreddit back in the day when it was popular and stuff. It's not a true reflection of the amount of haters they have. And in all actuality, in my opinion, they still have more fans than they have haters, like way more. That's why they're able to have a career. If you have more haters and fans, you are not going to be able to tour. You're not going to be able to pay your mortgage and pay for your flipping car note and your you know, in your kids' tuition, if you have more haters than flipping um, actual fans, it doesn't happen that way. But, you know, in life, we, try, we like to focus on a negative instead of the positive. So I guess it is what it is. What can you do? That's the one thing that I genuinely didn't understand when it happened. But I think when I rested on it and I thought of my boy brain, like my male brain, my toxic male brain, my brain where I've done things before that aren't probably the most noble or the most um, principle-based things, I understood why. So at the time, I was thinking to myself, why aren't people making more of a deal of the fact that, because at the time, imagine, at the time there was people on the Tiger Belly subreddit basically asking the question, when will Bobby Lee and Clyde get married? That was an actual thing around that Tiger Belly community. They were so good together at the time, or maybe on camera, maybe behind the scenes, they had the issues, but from what we saw of them, they looked so good together. People were wondering when they're going to get married, when they're going to start a family. So they were actually really together together. It wasn't like some loose hanging out sometimes when I'm drunk, we touch each other. No, they were actually boyfriend and girlfriend, 
going soon to be, you know, maybe be engaged and maybe be married. So I never understood why at the time, why more of a deal wasn't made out of the fact that Brendan Schaub tried to slide in the DMs of one of somebody, of, of his fellow peer, comedy colleagues, you know, girlfriends flipping DMs. It didn't make any sense. Like, how, why is no one making more of a, more of a stink about this? This is insane. If this happened in a friendship group and you try to fuck one of your friend's girlfriends, you might get beaten up. Do you know what I mean? Like, someone might legitimately come to your house with a baseball bat or something. Like, it's quite serious. But then I realized, oh, I know why this is not a big deal. Number one, obviously the Rogan thing kind of inoculated him from the hate. Maybe the UFC thing, people scared that he might fuck you up, cool. But also the fact that a lot of those comedians have done the same, if not worse. That's my theory. A lot of them have their own skeletons in their closet. So no one wanted to come up and say, oh, that's fucked up. That's really disrespectful. How you do that to somebody if you call a friend, blah, blah, blah. The things that you say in normal life, they couldn't say it because they also have done fuck shit. So I'm, I was thinking of my own point of view, when you're sitting something with somebody and you may be sitting with your girlfriends or something, like, you know, your, your, your friends that you know that happen to be girls and they're talking about, you know, moaning about their partners or, you know, asking you for advice about boy things and you can't really be honest because you know you've done some fuck shit. That's what I kind of felt like it was at the time. People kind of, you know, held their tongue because they know maybe some of them have slid into Kalala's DMs. Maybe some of them have hooked up with her behind the scenes. Who knows? But I feel like that's what happened. That's why people kind of left it alone and didn't want to speak about it, which was kind of weird and self um but yeah and uh, you know whatever and he, he, he did he even say sorry publicly about that i don't think he did did he did he say sorry about that i don't think he did um it's just a weird thing anyway but what, what, what can you do yeah exactly As somebody said um jared Mellerick said too close to home exactly it was too close to home they couldn't comment on which is quite under which is quite i feel like somewhat honorable that they did that to be honest they kind of you know kept their opinions to themselves and didn't try to like you know get involved because they knew they had their own skeletons that they kind of had to deal with so fair enough in that regard i'm not gonna lie fair enough in that regard